Today we are joined by Mr. Pravil Singh. He is VP at Zoho, and we are going to talk about Zoho's stellar results, its investment plans, and what do they have? What do they have when it comes to AI? Thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you for okay. for coming today. Uh, so we are going to start by talking about your stellar results. Like we see, we have sixty five percent CAGR growth in India as well as globally. What do you think has been driving this growth? Uh, has it been the pandemic, or and how do you see it play out in the next few financial years? Yeah. So uh, historically, we've been uh, known for the the startup and the MSME markets that we play in. But over the years, uh, I think two things happen. One is the uh, the product platform itself has uh, grown in terms of both breadth and depth, and uh, the investments that we made in terms of go to market and the platform both resulted in us being able to work with a lot of larger organizations solving uh, complex business needs. Uh, of course. there is a role to play uh, uh, with our si partners that we have worked on some we announced today some we are already working on uh, and over the years what has happened is being able to deliver uh, the technology to these larger companies with the same ease of use simplicity and uh, even a shorter implementation cycle at an affordable cost uh, more so in this economic situation that we are in environment i think all that put together has led to this growth of uh, 65% of the last 3 years cagr globally also in india uh, but more interestingly today more than half of our business is from this segment in india so that's a good sign uh, in in these times and we are very bullish uh, on the, on the market All right. Uh, coming to my next question, uh, like I saw in your announcement, there was a lot of it in the growth in India is driven by government sector and PSUs. So, how do you think? Uh, do you do you think there's a lot of uh, space for them to grow? Do you think there's a lot of digital transformation needed there? And how do you see their contribution in your whole whole pie in the next few quarters? Yeah. So, when we look at up market, we're looking at customers upwards of 250 employees, uh, all the way to enterprise, which is 1,000 plus employees. Um, and while the, the major sectors include BFSI, healthcare, pharma, uh, others, PSUs and government institutions, both central and state level, also uh, are now you know something we have been investing a lot in. We've been running separate programs for governments, working closely with them. and i think uh, the kind of propensity we have built as a brand known for certain things of running a technology company out of india for the world for the last 20 25 years uh, having the know how and the capability from a tech stack perspective and privacy and, and security centric uh, as a as a business it has led to a lot of interesting conversations with a lot of uh, government institutions started uh, during the pandemic but has continued uh unfortunately i can't take the names that i would love to but some of the larger psus that we're working with are on uh, for example one of them is is running uh, on our enterprise collaboration uh suite over thousands of users uh managing daily operations across it so uh that's how i would i would split that uh, between psus and and uh, large enterprises in india but uh what we see going forward is you know as more and more government institutions look for digitization or what we call digital transformation you know they are looking for vendors who can come in are affordable at the same time are able to do this with agility you know with a shorter runway because honestly no organization wants to be slowed down just because implementation takes forever and i think that's one area where when we set out to do this uh, which is capturing the up market uh, segment we kept it very close to us that our time to implementation has to be shorter and i think we're able to do that uh, not just with the breadth and the depth of the technology platform that we have but the extensibility and interoperability that we bring in everything from a no code low code to pro code uh, extensions i think they have become very critical not just in the psu segment but also outside and you did announce a suite of products today could you tell our viewers a bit about them yeah so uh, we announced uh, a bunch of products particularly for the up market segment uh, you know one is managing contracts is something that is very challenging in mid to large size companies everything from approving payments negotiation the, the stages uh, to manage so we launched zoho contracts uh, for companies to manage their contract cycles uh, there is a product we had called data prep uh, we announced it a few years ago we are bringing uh, its integration with zoho crm what it enables is uh, to have a cleaner record within crm and again sales and marketing folks uh, you know spend a lot of time in crm cleaner data means better more uh, insightful actions going forward 
So uh, data types integration with CRM is the other one. Uh, a couple of other products that we announced uh, today as part of our security uh, uh, offerings is uh, one is OneAuth, which helps multi-factor authentication for Zoho apps and uh, two-factor authentication for any applications you use like consumer apps like social media network apps and so on and so forth. Two-factor authentication is, is very critical for security and, and uh, OneAuth enables you to do that. Uh, interestingly, we are bringing in Cloud Sync into that, so regardless of which, app, which device your uh, OneAuth sits on, the data will be seamlessly synced across devices. And the other one is Zoho Directory, which one, uh, OneAuth also integrates with. It is for managing your uh, the directory within an organization. We are launching it with 250 plus uh, single sign-on, uh, this thing into it. And uh, in interestingly, we've had this for over uh, a decade and a half, uh, Zoho runs on it. Uh, we just packaged it, got it ready, got it better over the years, and we're now announcing it for the rest of the world so that uh, mid to large size companies can run their uh, entire environment on Zoho directory. All right, coming to the biggest buzzword of the current times, talking about AI, uh, you did announce that to begin with you're going to, you know, integrate existing uh, AI services within all your products and then you'll go on to building your own LLM. Could you tell our viewers a bit more about it and a little bit more about your LLM? What do you think it's, it's going to look like? What problems or specific use cases do you think is it going to solve? Sure. So uh, obviously, there's a lot of buzz around AI in general lately. And uh, interestingly for us, uh, we've been working on AI for over 10 years now. We've solved for uh, over two dozen use cases, everything from NLP to OCR to anomaly detection, uh, grammar correction. And all of this is already available across the suite of products that we offer. Uh, and when the, the generative AI came up, uh, the first I mean, the first step was to obviously make it available for our customers across the applications uh, that we have. And uh, we look at it in a short term, uh, medium term and long term phases, I would say. So short term integration uh, with uh, Genitive AI was announced a few weeks ago already with more than a dozen Zoho apps integrating with, with this and more coming into the, into the mix. But mid to long term, we want to uh, not just integrate, but able to own that LLM because uh, and we're already building our proprietary LLM uh, to make all of this a lot easier, seamless through the application suite. And one thing we want to keep, uh, uh, you know, be mindful of, which is the way we operate businesses, be very, very, uh, you know, focused on privacy in terms of how we handle user data, right? And that's something that we've been very, very uh, vocal about as well. Um, so uh, this is an ongoing project, part of our Zoho Labs team. Uh, we don't have a set timeline of, of you not putting it as a, as, a, as a very short goal. Something we have been started investing in, we will continue to do it, the way we've been doing it for over a decade. Mm -hmm. But we do not want the customers to have to suffer until we get there. Okay. So for the short term, the integrations come in place and customers are free to choose whatever they want. Long term, when we have ours ready, the, the choice would still be with the customer of what he or she wants to plug on to. All right. Uh, and, but when you talk about building an LLM in-house, do you think uh, your, your team as well as uh, India in general has the talent or the right skill set to build an LLM? Honestly, I won't question the talent in the country available. Uh, what I would say is in this path uh, 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 that we are all talking about, you know, there are a lot of uh, unknowns and there are a lot of unknown unknowns. And the best of the companies that are solving for this are still figuring it out. You know, um, not just from the technology perspective, but the upside and the downside of it, the challenges it brings in on the privacy side of it, on data. Uh, there's still a healthy discussion, debate, conversation that's going on. And I think a lot of it would unfold as we, as we walk on this path. But I don't think talent or, or I mean, as a company that takes pride in building technology, building products from the ground up, uh, and having done that for the last two decades, I, I would not question availability of talent being being a challenge. But how it unfolds, how it gets better over time, and how it's get uh, how it gets adapted uh, and adopted both across organizations and in in personal use cases, is something we'll see uh, over the next several years. And uh, coming to the next financial uh, years, what sectors and geographies do you think are going to drive the growth for Zoho? Uh, so. Uh, in terms of sectors, like I said, the top five, four or five sectors we've seen is BFSI, health, uh, pharma, uh, some of the others, IT. 
uh, they'll continue to be that way is what we feel uh, because we're seeing a lot of adoption uh, in some of these sectors for Zoho suite of applications. And uh, it's pretty much uh, land and expand. So, you know, we start to solve for one particular need or a challenge. And then we move on to solve for adjacent needs. And then one thing leads to the other. And then, you know, I spoke about some examples of how we start to solve for, let's say, an HR need. And today, the account is much bigger. Uh, and our, our investments kind of explain that as well, the trend that we are seeing. In terms of geography, uh, obviously, uh, uh, India is, is one of the fastest growing regions. We have Middle East Africa as one of our fastest growing regions as well. So we are fairly diversified with our transnational localism strategy where we have local leadership, hiring local people there now, uh, building for customer-facing roles across the country uh, in each of these regions. And then fairly distributed data center ecosystem that we have, more than a dozen data centers. Mm -hmm. I think all that over the years of putting them in place has, has sort of gotten us on a spot where uh, we, we are very, very uh, bullish on, on our growth uh, in these regions. Obviously, there are economic uh, environment that we all live in, and it will have its uh, repercussions. But uh, we are still reasonably uh, uh, you know, positive about our, our future ahead. I have one last question. Uh, what's, what's your plan when it comes to hiring? Uh, you did say, put out a statement around last year that Zoho would be hiring 1,000 people uh, in the next year. But now that we see that there have been some changes in the macro economy with AI coming in, what? how do you think has it impacted your hiring plans and how do you see it uh, you know, unfurling? Yeah, so two things happened uh, between then and now. Uh, one is definitely AI, as you said, but also the economic uh, you know, uh, headwinds. Uh, what we managed to do was, A, make a commitment that we would not do layoffs, mm -hmm. which uh, in this environment was something that, so we got that uh, away uh, out of people that we have on the team. Uh, secondly, uh, we're being very strategic in how we deploy people onto certain projects. So, so there are, that means obviously moving people around. That's another intensive exercise that we are, we are going through as we speak. Uh, getting uh, the other thing is we continue to honor all the offers that we had rolled out earlier as part of campus placements or otherwise but we're not doing fresh recruitment drives as we speak still there's hiring going on on a very selective need to basis customer facing roles here and there but broader mass hiring right now is uh, definitely not on, on charts uh, for obvious reasons and and we're taking it month by month quarter by quarter based on how we how we intend to uh, expand further. But at this point, uh, looking at the larger picture, uh, we'll probably keep it this way for the next several months. Okay. Thank you so much for to talking to us and Thanks. taking out your time. Thank you. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.